Thing here's what's happening. Elvis Presley, whose country rock guitar and gyrating hips launched a new era in popular music, died this afternoon at Baptist Hospital in Memphis, Tennessee at the age of 42. Presley had been taken to the emergency room suffering from what was described as respiratory distress. He had been hospitalized several times in recent years for rest and eye operations. He was born in Tupelo, Mississippi on January 8, 1935. He received his first guitar when he was 12 and taught himself to play. While training to be an electrician, the Sun Record Company offered him an audition. His first recording, That's All Right Mama, sold 7,000 copies in Memphis alone, and after that it was all uphill. There was only one interruption when he joined the Army in 1958. Teenage girls all over the country wept the thought of a two-year separation, but while Presley was in the service, new records were sporadically released, and Elvis had no trouble holding on to his following. Although otherwise an average soldier, Presley lived off base with his father and grandmother in a seven-room house. While he was in the Army, he earned nearly $2 million. When Presley collapsed at his Memphis home today, his road manager, Joe Esposito, tried to revive him. His personal physician met the ambulance at Baptist Hospital but also failed to revive the singer. Elvis Presley, dead today at 42. Elvis was found by his road manager, Joe Esposito, about 2.30 this afternoon. Esposito tried to revive Presley without success while an ambulance rushed to his Graceland mansion. Elvis Aaron Presley was born in a two-room house in Tupelo, Mississippi on January the 8th, 1935. He died this afternoon at the age of 42, a millionaire many times over, and probably the most famous recording star in history. Good evening. Elvis Presley, the longtime king of rock and roll, is dead. An autopsy report released tonight says the 42-year-old Presley died today. In Good afternoon, everybody. The fans of Elvis Presley continue to mourn his death today, a death that came as a shock to all of us. The late singer's body was returned to his Memphis mansion this morning, and plans were made to put the body on view there for two hours to allow mourners to pass by and pay their respects. Presley will be buried tomorrow after private funeral services. Newsman Jerry Liddell has a report on the gap that is left behind. Elvis Presley, the good old boy we were always told used to be a truck driver. Elvis Presley, for better than half of his 42 years, a superstar, symbol of a generation. He was, in fact, Elvis the King ten times longer than he was Elvis the Trucker. He carried a generation, 20 years to the two years he hauled a load through red clay country. A few of the lucky will remember Elvis this way in concert. Thank you very much. But Elvis Presley reached most of his generation this way, through records and through the radio. Well, I guess stations all over the United States are doing what we're doing here on WBZ, and that's playing songs by Elvis Presley. And if they miss this one, they're making a big mistake, because it's got to be one of the best Elvis Presley records of all time. Besides, I think it's great. This is old Shep. When I... Elvis Presley reached us because his sounds, his style of blues, or whatever it was that became the hallmark of rock and roll, came at us from every radio in the land. started about you know two years earlier and everybody knew something was happening but I don't think people knew what just was happening as far as radio was concerned it was, he probably aided the demise of uh, network radio as we knew it back then when I first started in the business in the early 50s because people wanted to hear music and and he made people go into record stores of course he, he was good for every recording artist because he got people into stores buying one of his records and they buy one of somebody else's records remember people that nobody will ever be as big as Elvis Presley. Well, they were wrong. And I, I don't know if anybody will take his place. That's a different story. No, to somebody, there will never be an Elvis Presley. But for a commanding figure in the business, sure, I think so. Elvis Presley, the pioneer with one simple task in life, to bring rock and roll to all of us. And that he did. Not since the death of actor James Dean two decades ago has there been such a public outpouring of grief over the loss of a major entertainment figure. 
Hundreds of Elvis Presley fans became lined up outside of uh, Memphis mansion last night, some of them in tears, some recounting stories of the impact he had on their lives. For two hours this afternoon, fans passed through the mansion where Elvis lies in state. But morning was not confined to Tennessee. An overpass in Boston reflected the sentiments of Elvis fans. Eyewitness News reporter Andy Hiller takes a look at the singer and the legend he has become. For most people, says the New York Times, Elvis Presley was rock and roll. If he died, it's king, then his reign began in 1956. For his second appearance, of three appearances on our show tonight, Elvis Presley. You ready? Set. Go and go. I got a gal that I love so. Elvis Presley was born poor in Mississippi, the son of a painter. Before he was 20, he had developed the rebellious, sullen good looks that made him an enemy of many parents and the idol of millions of teenagers in the mid-1950s. Even by then, his success was enormous, and not surprisingly, it was something he didn't understand. First time I appeared on stage, and it scared me to death. I really didn't know what it, the yelling was about. I didn't realize that my body was moving in. It was a natural thing to me. You know? So the manager backstage, I said, what I do, what I do? He said, well, whatever it is, go back and do it again. past and music changed, Elvis Presley remained the king of rock and roll, though his court aged with him. His hip swiveling seemed juvenile compared to the openly suggestive gyrations of performers of the 60s and 70s, and it was. But Elvis's contribution was more than movement. It was an attitude of independence and strength that kept his fans among the most loyal in the entertainment world. Now, everyone will remember Elvis Presley for different reasons, but they will all share the biggest memory, his music. stay this hour of love we share will always be and be no coming day to shine a morning light make us realize our night is over time went on a moving thing i can make it stay this hour of love we share One of the singer's close friends, Perry Como, characterized Elvis as a gentle, mischievous, and generous boy who turned angry and frustrated at the world of stardom he lived in. President Carter today called Elvis unique and irreplaceable and said his death deprives the country of part of itself. Callers have swamped the White House switchboard today, urging the president to declare a national day of mourning. Tony? His body lay in repose at his mansion in Memphis. Crowds began gathering outside the Presley Mansion last night, shortly after the announcement that the 42-year-old entertainer had died of heart trouble. The gates were opened at 4 o'clock to allow the Presley faithful to view the body. After all the hours of waiting, most of the fans were allowed but a few seconds to get a glimpse of Elvis and then were forced to move on. The crowd at the Graceland Mansion was so large that nearly 50 people, overcome in the crunch, required emergency treatment some of them taken away in ambulances. Just a short time ago, gates at the Presley Mansion were closed and the lid of his steel-lined coffin closed to await burial tomorrow. At this hour, people in Portland, Maine would have been filing into the Civic Center to attend the first of a two-night Presley concert, 
Jorge Quiroga was in Portland today. He has this story. It was ironic that as we drove into Portland, Maine, the site of Elvis Presley's first concert stop on his new tour, that You Ain't Nothing But a Hound Dog was playing on the radio. A song that put Elvis on the map announced to us the bereavement that Portland felt over his death. Ticket demand for Elvis Presley's concert had been so tremendous that a second concert had to be arranged. It sold out as quickly as the first one had. The set was getting its final touches and the fifth floor of a local hotel was being prepared to receive the Presley entourage when the news of his death was announced in Portland. Shock was the, was the immediate uh, and disbelief. We checked it out from all possible angles, not only locally but nationally to see if the story was true because we had been talking to the Presley people. They were ready to come into the building. We were expecting him. It was the eve of the performance and his people were already in town. Uh, we had just sold out two shows to over 17,000 people. I was stood in line for two nights, sleeping over, and the whole thing was just hard to believe. In Portland, like in every other city and town across the United States, Elvis Presley was a true working-class hero. They looked up to him as the realization of the American dream. Elvis is just not the music with me. It's him. He set an example to me, the way he lived, his clean living, the way he used people his sincerity, his honesty, his manners, the way he treated his mother. Uh, to me, he was a person. Presley's fans were aware that the man was a multimillionaire. That fact never affected their loyalty. From rags to riches, they said, but he never thought he was better than any of us. In Portland, they were just grateful that he had agreed to play their town. I was a kid. You were my favorite idol. I had all you met. And I mean today that I would get the chance to meet him. This is going to be your first time to see him? The dream of a lifetime? Yeah. I say it what? You were one of probably one of the, a big fan. Sitting in this empty arena just hours before Elvis Presley was scheduled to perform, one can imagine the mass hysteria that would have been upon Elvis Presley's arrival. Now with his death, the silence gives you a feeling of mourning. Many people will never understand the loyalty and identification of a fan to an artist. But I'm sure that as many fans throughout the world will agree with me when I say, Elvis Presley is dead. Long live the king. For News 5, I'm Jorge Quiroga in Portland, Maine. Another stop on the Presley tour was to have been Hartford, Connecticut. The Civic Center there set up a refund booth this morning, but didn't do much business. Most people kept their tickets, apparently as souvenirs. And as for those who wanted their money back, there were plenty of eager customers offering to buy those tickets for a performance that would never be. For some, it was a sign of their love for Elvis. For others, it was an investment. As one might imagine, Presley's death has resulted in a rush of record buyers to Boston Music and record stores, cleaning out the stocks in some instances. Those who spread his fame over local radio stations today reflected on the impact the King of Rock had on his fans and on the new music sound. Roger Goodrich reports. Elvis was no hound dog to the millions of fans who loved to hear him and to watch that famous pelvis in action. And Arnie Ginsberg, now a Medford radio station manager, better known at the height of his platter-spinning fame as Woo Woo Ginsberg, told us today he didn't really know Presley, and there was hardly anyone who did. Never met him, and he was a very private person. I, I don't know anybody who knew Elvis. What do you think accounted for Elvis's great success? I think, first of all, that the year 1956, it was the Eisenhower gray flannel era, and uh, music was kind of dull. The Doris Day, Eddie Fishers had said all they had to say, and people were looking for something new, and Elvis took this combination of uh, the black music, the rock and roll, uh, the uh, rhythm and blues, and the country music, mixed them together, and he just had a great natural style, and uh, he had a super talent. He could communicate. People loved him. And I think, he, uh, you know, at that time, it was teeny bob music. The kids had their own music, and at last they had their own super style. And he was uh, uh, very colorful, you know, the way, uh, uh, the way he played uh, the guitar, the way he dressed, the way he looked. Uh, he was their rebel with a cause. Sadden Presley followers spread a banner saluting their star over Storo Drive today. Presley biographers and friends are debating reports Presley was heavily into drugs and let the drug habit run his life. 
Ginsburg said nothing he knew of Presley would lead him to believe the singer was a victim of severe drug addiction. Roger Goodrich, News 5, Medford. Incidentally, the doctor who performed the autopsy said there was no evidence of any drug abuse. There have been scores of eulogies to Elvis, but perhaps the most notable came today from President Jimmy Carter. In a statement issued by the White House, the president described Presley as someone unique and irreplaceable, whose music and personality permanently changed the face of American popular culture. The president said that Elvis was a symbol to the world of America's vitality, rebelliousness, and good humor. Boston patrolman John O'Brien may keep his house after all. We'll have Smith and performers now carry names the smack of H.G. Wells. The changes, of course, are inevitable. The memories and the tributes are equal to that period of the 1950s when pop melodies changed 360 degrees and American music would never again be the same, largely because of a wild-eyed young man from Tupelo, Mississippi. I love you and I always will love me Gary Armstrong, Newsroom 7. Oh, my darling, I love you, and I always will. Good evening. From coast to coast today is records sold like hotcakes. Overseas is death made front page headlines. The President of the United States eulogized him as an artist who had permanently changed the face of American pop culture. And in Memphis, Tennessee, thousands of his grieving fans waited in line for hours outside his home for a final view of singer Elvis Presley, who died yesterday at the age of 42. ABC's Ron Miller reports on the continuing Presley phenomenon. An estimated 10,000 people from all sections of the country assembled at Presley's compound, Graceland Mansion, for his public viewing. All had come for very personal reasons. I, uh consider Elvis a part of my life from childhood through my teen years and my adult life and I feel a part of it's gone now. I think I've been in love with Elvis Presley since I was 14 and I used to sit and calculate uh, if he was too old for me or not and besides that I think uh, Elvis had more impact on our society than any other any other popular musician except perhaps the Beatles, and the Beatles were English, not American. Presley had been hospitalized several times in recent years for ailments generally diagnosed as fatigue and intestinal disorders. His weight was an increasing problem, but none of his associates believed him to be an ill health or a drug user. News of his death jammed telephone lines in Memphis. Florists were unable to keep up with orders that came from Europe, Asia, and Africa. Certainly some of those who came to Memphis were motivated by curiosity, but as the heat intensified, the crowd still grew and police were faced with another problem. Untold dozens of people fainted in the thick jam of people. It was often difficult to extricate them from the crowd. Finally, after some had waited as long as 14 hours, the crowd was allowed into Graceland Mansion to view his body. Cameras were not permitted. The beer was in an all-white, dimly lit foyer. Presley was dressed in white. Friends and relatives were assembled to one side. And it's clear that the public's reaction to the death of the dream of Elvis Presley will not end tonight. Ron Miller, ABC News, Memphis. Presley was to have launched a nationwide tour tonight at the Civic Center in Portland, Maine. But today the hall was empty, except for some occasional fans who wandered in, some of them talking about the possibility of pooling refunds from their tickets for a donation in memory of the singer. The center's executive director said officials are looking into the possibility of staging a memorial tribute to Elvis Friday night. In the meantime, most of those who had tickets for tonight's canceled performance said they would hold on to them as a remembrance. Funeral services for Elvis Presley were held this afternoon at his Memphis mansion. Those services were marred by a bizarre accident earlier today. About 3.45 this morning, two teenage girls were killed when a car drove through the crowd outside the mansion. Another teenager was hit and is now reported in critical condition. Police gave chase and arrested the driver and three juvenile girls. The driver has been charged with second-degree murder, drunk driving, leaving the scene of an accident, and reckless driving. The juveniles were charged with being accessories. Presley was laid to rest in a marble mausoleum in Memphis, Tennessee today after a private funeral attended by 200 mourners, including his family, show business friends, and associates. 
thousands of his fans crowded around the Presley Mansion and lined the street leading to the cemetery in an emotional final tribute to the singer who died Tuesday of heart failure. ABC's Charles Murphy with the story. They knew they wouldn't get inside the mansion for the funeral, but Elvis's fans came anyway and waited for hours. They came from all over the United States. Most of them were young women. In the heat and excitement, a number fainted. The funeral, preached by television minister Rex Humbert, lasted more than an hour. Finally, the hearse bearing Presley's coffin wound down the driveway of Graceland onto Elvis Presley Boulevard. It was a white cortege, a white hearse, and ten white Cadillacs. Elvis loved Cadillacs. He had a dozen himself. The cemetery was closed to the public, too, but still many people stood outside in the hot sun to see the hearse go by and to say that they had been here. We love Elvis. We still do. You're not going to get in, you know. Doesn't make any difference. The coffin was carried by Presley's closest friends and business associates. Besides family, mourners included a number of show business personalities who counted themselves friends, too. Charles Murphy, ABC News, Memphis. Earlier in the day, a young driver plowed his car into a crowd of mourners outside the Presley home. Two teenage girls were killed and a third critically injured. The driver is being held without bond. The boss paid the full cost. Fans paid their last respects to their rock and roll idol in Memphis, Tennessee today. The day of mourning was marred by a hit and run driver plowing into a crowd outside Presley's estate early this morning. Two teenage girls were killed and a third critically injured. Only a small group of friends and relatives actually attended the funeral service. CBS News correspondent Ed Rabel has a report. The somber funeral procession moved slowly down the driveway and out onto Elvis Presley Boulevard for the three and a half mile drive to Forest Hill Cemetery. Just as it emerged, a young woman jumped in front of the hearse carrying Presley's body. Authorities pulled her out of the way. The police escorted motorcade moved on without incident, passing grieving Presley admirers who had gathered lining the boulevard five deep. Still more thousands of Presley's fans were waiting when the procession arrived at the cemetery. Presley was to be entombed in this one-story marble mausoleum. On the front lawn, flowers sent by the truckload by Presley followers were arranged in profusion. One was in the form of a six-foot-long guitar. Presley's crypt is in the so-called Presley Room, where other family members will eventually be entombed. His crypt will always be visible to the public through a locked wrought iron door. Officials believe Presley will continue to attract in death many of those who were so devoted to him when he was alive. Ed Rabel, CBS News, Memphis. The long procession to Forest Hill Cemetery. The drive from the mansion up Elvis Presley Boulevard to the cemetery ordinarily takes a few minutes to drive. Today, the motorcade was repeatedly slowed by thousands of mourners who lined the three-mile route and who repeatedly broke through police lines. It took almost an hour for the cars to reach the cemetery. There, the invited guests watched the copper casket being carried inside a large public mausoleum to a special family crypt reserved for Presley's body yesterday. It isn't known whether the body will remain there or whether a special burial place is being prepared, which would also hold the body of the singer's mother. Like her son, she died at the age of 42. Jackson Bain, NBC News, in Memphis. That's it for this evening. Good night for NBC News. Elvis Presley was laid to rest in a marble mausoleum in Memphis, Tennessee today after a private funeral attended by 200 mourners, including his family, show business friends, and associates. Thousands of his fans crowded around the Presley mansion and lined the street leading to the cemetery in an emotional final tribute to the singer who died Tuesday of heart failure. ABC's Charles Murphy with the story. They knew they wouldn't get inside the mansion for the funeral, but Elvis's fans came anyway and waited for hours. They came from all over the United States. Most of them were young women. In the heat and excitement, a number fainted. The funeral, preached by television minister Rex Humbert, lasted more than an hour. Finally, the hearse bearing Presley's coffin wound down the driveway of Graceland onto Elvis Presley Boulevard. It was a white cortege, a white hearse, and ten white Cadillacs. Elvis loved Cadillacs. 
He had a dozen himself. The cemetery was closed to the public, too, but still many people stood outside in the hot sun to see the hearse go by and to say that they had been here. We love Elvis. We still do. You're not going to get in, you know. It doesn't make any difference. The coffin was carried by Presley's closest friends and business associates. Besides family, mourners included a number of show business personalities who counted themselves friends, too. Charles Murphy, ABC News, Memphis. Earlier in the day, a young driver plowed his car into a crowd of mourners outside the Presley home. Two teenage girls were killed and a third critically injured. The driver is being held without bond. The boss paid the full cost. Fans paid their last respects to their rock and roll idol in Memphis, Tennessee today. The day of mourning was marred by a hit and run driver plowing into a crowd outside Presley's estate early this morning. Two teenage girls were killed and a third critically injured. Only a small group of friends and relatives actually attended the funeral service. CBS News correspondent Ed Rabel has a report. The somber funeral procession moved slowly down the driveway and out onto Elvis Presley Boulevard for the three and a half mile drive to Forest Hill Cemetery. Just as it emerged, a young woman jumped in front of the hearse carrying Presley's body. Authorities pulled her out of the way. The police escorted motorcade moved on without incident, passing grieving Presley admirers who had gathered lining the boulevard five deep. Still more thousands of Presley's fans were waiting when the procession arrived at the cemetery. Presley was to be entombed in this one-story marble mausoleum. On the front lawn, flowers sent by the truckload by Presley followers were arranged in profusion. One was in the form of a six-foot-long guitar. Presley's crypt is in the so-called Presley Room, where other family members will eventually be entombed. His crypt will always be visible to the public through a locked wrought iron door. Officials believe Presley will continue to attract, in death, many of those who were so devoted to him when he was alive. Ed Rabel, CBS News, Memphis. This is CBS. I mentioned, uh, have got together with Steve Dunlevy, a reporter, and they wrote the book, Elvis, What Happened? The thrust of that book, as you know, was written before his death, and it's a, it can be brutal in spots. Elvis's fans are not going to like this book, I don't think. Although it's, it has the pluses, but it sure has the warts in there. The idea was asking, in a way, Elvis to shape up while he still had time. So we'll talk with that man, Steve Dunlevy, in just a moment. <laughs> Elvis Presley, the son of a truck driver. Elvis became one of the world's most important rock music stars, if not the, he was the most important. The world knows Elvis as a devoted son, a model army recruit, a loving husband and father. And as a gifted entertainer. Three of Elvis Presley's former bodyguards have joined forces with professional writer Steve Dunleavy to produce a book, Elvis, What Happened? Good morning, Steve Dunleavy. Good morning. Good Thank you very welcome much for to you. Me. You know Natalie? We met well, just a few minutes ago. I said before this, for the Elvis fans, this is a brutal book. Uh, I'm not so sure they're going to like it. Well, I think, um, I think brutal perhaps is too strong a word. Uh, they may not like it in parts. But uh, if they really want to know his true life story and the book taken in its whole, uh, they will find out that uh, he was everything they thought he was, but he was also a human being. And like all human beings, he had his failings. But the last 15 years is where you, you really zero in on Elvis. What happened after the success? It, it like perhaps no, no, no new worlds to conquer after he uh, became resigned to the fact he wasn't going to be exactly. an outstanding actor. Yeah, and you say, so many times I'd heard reports to the effect that Elvis Presley 
did not touch any kind of drugs, yet you say he took every kind of pill there was, uppers, downers, in-betweeners? Yes. He also had a, near the last few years, uh, he had a terrible temper. He'd go into rages. And then it sounded almost like he was a necrophiliac. He had an, a fascination with death and going to morgues at night. Well, a necrophiliac, of course, that's not the, the true definition of it. But no. he did have an obsession with death, um, which I think uh, he'd had for many, many years. Um, but um, his, uh, the practice of drug taking, uh, let's face it, um, in the entertainment business, it's, it's widespread. And uh, people today, of course, only feel that drugs are taken uh, by, the, uh, by the recent rock singers and the, the old, uh, and old Hollywood, as it were. But uh, that country and western scene down there for, uh, for many years, uh, right back you know, the 40, 45, 50, they were, they were hitting themselves with amphetamines like peanuts for, you know, for years upon years. But the, the thrust of the book um, is Presley in, it, in his entirety. Uh, you've read the book and you can see that uh, the boys, the bodyguards, talk uh, glowingly, there's some great warm moments. There's some moments of very, very tender love that only two men can ever experience between each other. Excuse me for interrupting uh, you, but that's one of the things that bothers me about the book. You do get the impression that these men did love him, but then how, what kind of a friend <coughs> is one who would then publicly tell the stories that they're telling about Elvis? If someone told stories like that about me, and even presuming they were true, I would find it hard to think of that person as a friend. Yes, well, I think they were hurt friends. They were very embittered friends. There were moments when I uh, taped them for a month last September, 10 hours a day for 30 days. And there were moments when uh, these tough guys, and believe me, they're tough guys, um, they just broke down in tears, you know, uncontrollable. I couldn't even talk to them for an hour. There was moments when I thought that uh, there, was, there was going to be no book, uh, where they wanted to back out of it. But it was Many their moments. idea, was it not, this book? <laughs> well, um, it was part our idea and part their idea. I tracked them down to do a story as soon as I found out they were fired last June. I tracked them down to do a story on them, and uh, these uh, amazing stories, which I frankly did not believe when I first heard them, uh, because I, like the public, even though I was a newspaper man and covering Presley for 10 years, I just couldn't, uh, couldn't bring myself to, uh, to recognize they were true. And uh, they had to do, there was many, many months of checking and uh, uh, a lot of footwork um, with lawyers and so on and so forth. So you're convinced we... now that what's in here is all true? Oh, yes. As a matter of fact, uh, a lot of it has been uh, has been since backed up by his uh, his girlfriend Linda Thompson, uh, and a very nice guy who uh, who was with him for many years in the Jordanaires, right up to his death, uh, Gordon Stoker, um, who uh, have confirmed all that's in the book, every word. But that Linda Thompson did take she said he didn't take as many pills as you say or they say. And well, so, and in the, the doctor most, too. Uh, in the most recent in the most recent interview, uh, she has uh, said that um, for uh, many of the years that she was that she was with him. Uh, he did indeed have, oh, have a medication problem. She now, the changed doctor, the statement. Then. Uh, I presume so. She yeah. changed the statement. Uh, Dr. Nicopolis um, has uh, said he had a medication problem. He said he didn't know what he was taking half the time. Dr. Nicopolis, a very, very loyal friend of Presley, uh, I wouldn't expect him to say anything else. But uh, I think one of the things that has vindicated this whole story is that um, there has been an announcement there will not be, there will not be uh, a, full, uh, a full unraveling of the autopsy and uh, the reason for his death. You know, one of the things that I found so difficult to understand was the fact, well, I guess for many people are torn like that, we're paradoxes to ourselves. He was, uh, he had a, you say there are only two women that he really, or two people, yeah. his mother and his wife. Uh, he was, he had the Bible, he quoted from the yes. Bible. He was a religious person, but he could be so sacrilegious at the same time, five minutes later. Yes. But at the very beginning, you're talking about in one of his drug scenes, he wanted the man who took his wife away <coughs> murdered. Mike Stone, yes. He, um, they were up in the 30th uh, floor in the Imperial Suite in Vegas, and he'd had a particularly bad three or four hours. Uh, Linda Thompson was there, and uh, he went into a rage, uh, and he had been in rages before about Mike Stone, who in those days was a simple $250 a week karate instructor. He was one of the the most incredible, the most, the most charismatic, the richest, most handsome entertainers in the world, and a $250 a week karate instructor, instructor takes his, uh, his beautiful wife away from him. Um, well, that's, it, you know, that's not a unique story, of not course, a unique and, story, and when no. that happens, a man doesn't order that man killed all the time. That's well, not all the time, <laughs> uh, although that happens too. He, uh, he was in a rage, and he turned first to uh, Sunny West, 
uh, and he took his hands, he looked into his eyes, almost in a, in a hip hypnotic scene, and he said, you know this man has to die. And he went into his uh, wardrobe and he pulled out an M16 rifle, which he carried with him quite a lot, together with a submachine gun, Thompson submachine gun, put it in his hands, and of course, Sonny got very emotional, backed away. Uh, he then turned to Red West, <coughs> um, who was perhaps the closest to Presley. Um, he uh, had grown up with him from high school onwards and been through the bad times, the good times, the high times, the low times. And uh, he turned to Red. Red admits that he was more influenced by Presley than anyone else. He was more likely to, to do as he was told. And uh, Presley said, OK, he said, uh, you get a hitman for me. You can do it. Mm -hmm. He said, I could do it in 10 seconds. Now you do it. And this went on for about six days where Presley went through various uh, highs and lows, uh, moments in and out of... Uh, in and out of uh, uh, drug influence. And then on the sixth day, and I remember Red saying, um, on the sixth day, he turned around and said, well, listen, Elvis, I've made the telephone call. It's $10,000. If you want it or not, Presley turned around straight. He hadn't any drugs in his hand. He says, no. He says, uh, I think it's a bit heavy. And Red turned to me, he said, last year, he said, he says, man, he said, I never kissed no one in my life, but I wanted to kiss him on the lips. I was so relieved. Mm. This is his stardom he couldn't handle, huh? I don't, I'm not quite sure. I think he could handle stardom, but I think it was a, a very typical case of he had no more mountains to climb. I mean, he rocketed from, like he rocketed yeah. from a, a, you know, a sort of a, a, a truck driver, um, just giving all the money to his money uh, to his mother. Uh, he had no, uh, he didn't spend any money on himself. He was incredibly a, generous too. Incredibly generous, pathologically so. He used to give away Cadillacs. Oh, and he'd never remind anybody about it. Like remind. some people do, they give you something and they'll never let you forget it. <laughs> he would never bring it up again, you never say. Never bring it up again. In, in those cases, he's given away millions of dollars worth of cars. And of course, this is to balance um, the true story. I mean, it's a, uh, for years, of course, he didn't have these violent black tempers. Uh, he started taking, uh, taking drugs in the army. He had a sergeant who, when they were in the, first, in the front line uh, during a crisis in Berlin, uh, he used to give the company amphetamines to keep them, uh, keep them awake and alert all night. And he was a kid who never, you know, a religious southern kid who never even drank. Uh, and he got used to them. Uh, and these bodyguards, of course, they were, they were popping them along with him. I mean, they, they're, they're not saying in any way that they're angels. No, they are. Uh, whatever uh, he was taking, they were taking too. Well, Steve, I thank you very much for being with us. There are the good side, there is the good side of Elvis uh, that is in here too. We've tried to touch on some of that. I guess the other side, the dark side that we didn't know about, uh, becomes the more topical. Uh, but that's not fair. Uh, Elvis Presley, you, you talk about him as they saw him as a, a boy in school. One of the things that was surprising, his hair wasn't really that dark. No, his, his hair, his hair was, was light. Dirty blonde. You can see in the yeah. early pictures, actually, in his early pictures. The Vaseline he put on it, <laughs> Well, he put Vaseline on it, and then later on, of course, he dyed it jet black. And in the end, of course, he had, he had hair very much like, like you. It was going, mm -hmm. going quite white up the sides. His father, Vernon, a very handsome man, he's got a beautiful shock of white, uh, white hair, uh, and he just used to, uh, he used to dye it uh, pitch black. It'd be interesting oh. to see what this book does. You know, some people think that the uh, the two are synonymous, the myth and Elvis Presley, and that they're so firmly entrenched in in the history of this country that while there are many negative things, many many in this book, it really is not going to hurt his reputation. No, I think, uh, but it, I, I think that was before being. the dark side was so surprising. Yeah. What with the picture we had of Elvis. And the other thing is, you know, if if, if for the sake of history, um, if we're going to write books about Richard Nixon and the Kennedys and let it all hang out, I mean, here is Elvis had more of an influence in this country than the Kennedys and Nixon put together. Well, right now they can't print enough of his albums. It's uh, the re demand for Elvis Presley. You try and find one. 30 times or something like that. Yeah, that's true. Supply. Well, I thank you very much for being with thank us. Thank you today. very much. Elvis thank Presley, you kindly. a legend in his time and will continue to be. I said he was the biggest, uh, bigger than the Beatles, I would say, by far. Not by far, but that. Certainly you know, bigger. Bigger. All right. Mm -hmm.